Okay, super, welcome. Nice to see you all. Uh, so 60 minute uh, gentle flow. So let's go ahead and find a comfortable seat to <clears throat> begin our practice. We'll just take a few moments to ground ourselves and connect with the breath inwardly. So however <clears throat> you find yourself sitting to feel relaxed and comfortable and sense of ease, just feeling the seat grounded and solid, established. Feel the natural upward lift through the spinal column without any exertion. Bringing the awareness to the breath now and Allowing it the natural ebb and flow of the breath without need to change or modify in any way. Finding a place to put your focal point uh, is a useful practice. <clears throat> Sometimes even just having awareness around the edge of the nostrils as you observe the breath on the inhale. Go ahead and bring the palms pressing together and the thumbs to the sternum. <coughs> and Jalini Mudra. And just pausing here with the hands at the heart center. And take a moment to bring to something, something to mind for which you're grateful. Perhaps that's uh, a person in your life or a loved pet or your health where we live, just something that uh, makes your heart smile, that makes you feel full, that makes you <clears throat> feel exuberance and joy. Letting the hands slide back down onto the thighs and we'll begin with some small movements here as we just take the torso in a circular uh, range of motion, really small, <coughs> small circles to begin with and really feeling sensation in the body, being aware of <coughs> every little nuance, every little feeling. And keep the eyes closed to do this if it helps to maintain the focus in order. And as you come through center, we'll start to go in the opposite direction now. Noticing any sensation, 
how is it feeling in this moment right now? And as you come back again through center, let's start in the first direction again. And this time expanding the range of motion, perhaps pressing the palms into the thighs to really bring the torso through the center, extending the spinal column forward, bringing some movement in the shoulders, the head. You can still move nice and slowly here, but just really feeling a little bit deeper uh, stretch from the first time around. Coming on the back, maybe rocking further back on the sits bones and extending the spinal column, chin off the chest. <clears throat> of course, just continuing to modify in any way that feels best for you. Now doing this larger range of motion in the opposite direction. If there's any area that's feeling a little bit uh, tighter than usual, any more tension than usual, you can actually move slowly back and forth over that spot, just gently breathing sensation into that. Otherwise, just keep moving in a circular direction. And as you come back through center, we'll just pause here momentarily. So we're going to come into a slight forward fold. Uh, if you are sitting with the legs crossed, particularly if you're in uh, half lotus, you might want to uncross some kind of seated easy pose or modify uh, even taking the legs out in front of you. When we come into our forward fold, think of extending the spinal column upward here. We're going to take our hands in front of us on tented fingers and start to walk them forward. So gently, slowly, don't push through any strong sensation in the low back. If your back is feeling tight today, then just go to the point where you can still rest into it and breathe comfortably and easy. <clears throat> really elongating the spinal column. Uh, and if you can keep the sits bones rooted down here as you elongate the spinal column forward, coming into a forward fold, maybe the forearms come onto the ground or just the palms. <clears throat> Depending on your range of motion, some people might just be letting the head rest or in the air, tucking the chin to the chest. And for uh, some people, perhaps your head can rest on stacked fists or stacked palms. Really letting the low back relax here, extending the spinal column forward. <clears throat> and for exiting, coming on the tented fingers, walking yourself back upright and out of that forward fold. We'll take the hands behind us, just placing them, perhaps turning them backwards here as we bring them behind you, maybe on tented fingers here. Press the fingers down. Now gently lowering the head back and lift the sternum up to the ceiling. So you're getting this beautiful arch in the low back as you lift the chest up, lowering the head back. Don't let the head collapse here. You don't want to release the musculature entirely in the back of the neck. A little bit of engagement. <clears throat> and then coming back to center, we'll come forward again into another forward fold. So again, you can walk the fingertips forward, keeping the sits bones rooted down as you begin to lower the forehead down in the direction of the mat, remember to elongate the spinal column. <clears throat> Again, the palms might be on the mat or the forearms uh, if you're able to lower the head, forehead down onto stacked fists, but not pushing, just going to your comfortable, easy range of motion. Breathing easily, like we said last time, the pose is sweet and steady. Steadiness of mind. Walking back on tented fingers to come back upright. Once more, we'll take this little back arch here as we take the hands behind us. <clears throat> and to 
chin lifting up toward the ceiling as you lower the head toward the back and lift the sternum high up to the ceiling. Excellent. Coming back through center here. <clears throat> Sitting squarely on the sits bones. Let's go ahead and come to a C curve here. We're going to take the right hand to the right hand side of the right hand to the right hand side of the mat and take the left arm out to the left side and lifting it high up to the ceiling up and over here. Now as you come toward a letter C, <laughs> really feel this broad stretch through the left side of the chest wall here. Now option gently moving the head side to side or if the neck's feeling a little bit uh, <clears throat> A little bit of tension today, then just keep it resting and relaxed and easy. Try not to collapse into the right hand on the ground there. <clears throat> Breathe deeply into the left chest wall. Pressing off the right hand, we're going to windmill the arms right through center and come to the opposite side as you place the left hand down on the mat. Now reach those right fingertips right over toward the left wall. Really extending and reaching those right fingertips. You want to keep the right sit bone rooted down. There might be a tendency for it to lift. We want to anchor it down here. And it's that extension of the right arm that really gives us broadness through the rib cage on the right chest wall. Again, option here to move the head side to side. Really breathing deeply into the depths of the belly, feeling it expanding outward like a beach ball being inflated. And on the exhale, you feel a belly button sort of pulling in the direction of the back wall of the <clears throat> torso. Great, let's go ahead and press off that left hand. We'll lower the right hand down to the ground. <clears throat> we'll come to a little bit of a uh, lateral twist here. So turning the torso, just bringing the left palm onto the right knee and the right hand to the floor behind you. Using the leverage of this left hand on the right thigh to give more twist through the torso. <clears throat> if it feels okay for the neck, turning the gaze over the right shoulder, keeping the chin parallel to the floor. Breathing here into the depths of the chest and belly. Obviously in a lateral twist, it's gonna be not quite as deep into the belly here, but as deep as you can into the lower lobes of the lungs. <clears throat> and then just taking the hands maybe a few inches off the ground as we swing the arms around, coming to the opposite side as you place the left, uh, right palm on the left thigh, the left hand close to the spine on the floor behind you and gazing over the left shoulder. <clears throat> and coming back through center again. So now we're going to transition to our hands and knees as we move out anything you may have been sitting on and just finding yourselves, the hips over the knees, shoulders over the hands. Nice, easy, loose spine to begin with. And moving through a little bit of extension and flexion of the spinal column, cat and cow. Now, as you press through the palms on the exhale, tuck the chin, lift the center of the back, high to the ceiling, rocking the pelvis in. And on the inhale, take the pelvis back, chin off the chest, gazing forward, softening the belly. Again, exhale as you come to cat pose. Tuck that chin as you rock the pelvis in. Inhale, coming toward cat lift. Also known as cow. Exhale, flowing with your breath. And back to cow. Excellent, let's go ahead and come to a neutral position here, and then we'll sink to child's pose, bringing the buttocks toward the heels, lowering the forehead to the mat. 
<clears throat> to take a brief rest here, you can come to full child's pose, bringing the arms alongside the body, palms facing up, forehead resting on the mat. Bring the arms out in front again for extended child pose. Forehead is still on the mat. Now a little bit of engagement with the flank here. We're going to lift up on the tended fingers with the forehead on the mat, lifting the forearms off the mat. <clears throat> Sinking the buttocks back to the heels. And walking the fingers slightly forward. So you feel this beautiful stretch through the flank. Of the torso, the, through the torso, the upper part of the <clears throat> broadness of the back. Now, as you allow the palms to come flat on the mat again, lifting up through ta uh, tabletop and coming down into a prone position on the belly. <clears throat> we'll untuck the toes so that the shoelaces of the feet are on the mat. Big toes are touching and let the heels splay slightly outward. Palms flat on the mat. The fingertips are sort of directly underneath the shoulder and keep the elbows tight into the ribcage. Rest the forehead on the mat. As we prepare to come to Cobra, we're going to want to extend or elongate the spinal column. So press through the palms. Don't allow the hands to slip but scrub the hands backwards so you elongate the spinal column forward and then lifting either a few inches or right up to the navel, coming to cobra here. So as you lift, you want to make sure you're pressing down through the pelvis and that you've really elongated the spinal column forward. <clears throat> it can also help to press down through the shoelaces of the feet, but there's other variations of this where the feet are lifted, but for now, just pressing down through the pelvis and the tops of the feet. Lowering the forehead down to the mat. <clears throat> we'll rest here for a moment. You can either keep resting on the forehead or turn to one cheek. And you can let the arms relax and they come along the side or just allow them to flop. <clears throat> and then preparing to come to a second Cobra, bring the forehead back to center, palms down, elbows tight to the ribcage. Press through the palms, elongate the spinal column forward, and then lifting. So say it could just be a couple of inches or right up to the navel, keep pressing the pelvis down. At this point, the bulk of the pressings in the pelvis is not a lot of weight on the hands and we'll lower down now either on the forehead or the opposite cheek and just taking a moment to rest here and bringing the head back to center so we're going to come into a half frog pose, so still prone on the belly here. And what we want to do is take, we'll keep the right leg stretched out behind us. We're going to bend the left leg toward a 90 degree angle, coming away from the hip, resting the knee out to the left hand side here. <coughs> keep the palms uh, face down, forehead on the mat. Just a little bit of work on the outer hip opening here. There's different variations of this where we sort of slightly roll onto the back, but for now we're just gently opening up the hip. It's a gentle practice. And then you can take that leg out behind you and then the opposite leg, bringing the right leg up toward a 90 degree angle and the upper thigh perpendicular away from the torso and then the shin bone running parallel to the torso. So if you think of the way frog legs are, uh, 90 degrees from the body at times. <laughs> so 
Beautiful. Let's go ahead and bring that leg in back behind. As we press through the palms, we're going to lift up through tabletop, coming toward down dog here. We're going to be using down dog as a transition toward a pigeon later on. So we'll take a few moments to warm up our down dog. Here you can pedal it out, perhaps dropping one heel and coming to the tiptoes of the opposite foot. Really noticing how you're moving through the entire body as you're feeling this long stretch. As you drop one heel, you're pressing through the opposing palm and moving to the other side, nice and slow. Lifting of the palms, take the hips further back than might seem uh, right at first. <clears throat> Great. And preparing for pigeon, we're going to lift the right leg high up to the ceiling. And as you bend the knee, swing that leg forward toward the front of the mat, dropping the knee down. We'll elongate and stretch out the left leg behind us and then untuck the toes so that you're on the shoelaces of the foot. You want to make sure that the right hip isn't falling out to the side. We're keeping it lifted off of the mat. So king pigeon here to start. And then beginning to lower down in the torso onto the thigh, lowering the forehead into the direction of the floor. You can rest the palms here. Now we'll do a little bit of uh, undulation of the spinal column. So as you keep the chin tucked to the chest, we're going to lift up again, straighter arms, and then leading with the chin, elongate the spine as you lower back down onto the thigh. Again, tucking the chin, we lift upward here, and then extending the spinal column and letting the head come down toward the leg. And again, tuck the chin as you straighten the arms to lift, reaching forward, arms bent, elongate the spine, lowering the forehead. Two more times here. <clears throat> and finally, we'll arrive in reclined pigeon. So you can lower the forehead onto the mat or bring the arms underneath and stack the fists or palms, allowing the, sh the forehead to rest so that the, n the muscles in the back of the neck are relaxing here instead of having engagement and having to keep the head lifted. Make sure that right hip stays off the mat. Now, if for some reason, uh, maybe you've had a, an injury or an issue with a knee or hip. Uh, for those who've had a replacement of a joint, it might not be possible to do uh, pigeon pose on a particular day or ever. Uh, in that case, you can come to uh, recline figure four. So for those in full pigeon, recline pigeon, just holding there for a moment as I just briefly demonstrate, we'll get the same benefit of figure four leg on the back either just gently pressing the thigh out or actually reaching through and hugging the, the knee, opposite knee into the chest. So you get the same benefit in the hip there uh, without um, the constriction that some might feel <clears throat> in a pigeon pose. So we get exit here, pressing through the fingertips, lifting back up to king pigeon, we're going to untuck the left toes, the back foot, press through the palms. We'll take the right leg back behind us, high three-legged dog, lift that right leg high. And you can actually uh, take some easy movement, it's either circling the leg or stacking the hips and bending the knee. Just taking a moment to move that hip joint around, ball and socket joint there, and then lower that foot to the floor. We'll come to the opposite side as you raise the left leg up as a transition point to come toward cobra, uh, pardon me, <laughs> bend, uh, pigeon, bend that left knee and bring it forward, placing it down near the front of the mat. Again, walking that right leg back and then untuck the toes, shoelaces of the foot, flat on the mat. To start with high king pigeon here. 
and then elongate the spinal column as you start to lower down into the recline pigeon. And then we'll just undulate the spine a few times. So keep the chin tucked to the chest as you begin to straighten the arms, lifting upward. And then leading with the chin as you elongate the spine to lower the forehead and the arms are bent. And again, tucking the chin. Lift upwards with straight arms. Lead with the chin forward, arms bent down as you lower down. Again, tuck the chin to the chest, lifting up. Two more times here, leading with the chin as you lower, tucking the chin as you raise. Last time here, and then landing into reclined pigeon. You can reposition the arms, perhaps bringing them to be stacked under the forehead as you let the forehead rest, keeping this left hip raised and off the ground, elongating that back leg, shoelaces of the foot on the ground. And even though we've come down into a little bit of a forward extension in some ways, keep ensuring that there's no contraction of the low part of the back here. You've elongated the spinal column forward as you come down to this reclined position. And letting the breath move throughout the body, sending it to areas that may feel some tightness, perhaps in your <clears throat> Left hip could be it's going to be different in different pla people, different places. A piriformis, maybe, maybe even for some, a little bit in the hamstring. Press through the palms again, lifting up to King Pigeon. And tucking the right toes now, pressing through the palms, taking that left leg back behind up into a three-legged dog. Again, either take a few circular motions of that hip, ball and socket joint, or stack the hip and the knee. Whatever movement feels good to um, bring some alternate sensation into that left hip. And then lowering the left leg down and dropping down onto the knees and coming to a child's pose again. So buttocks back to the heels, forehead to the mat. Let the arms relax, maybe even bringing them alongside the body in a little child's pose. And just taking an opportunity to reset and connect with the breath. Observing sensation in the body and noticing if there's activity in the mind. If the mind is being pulled in memories of the past or projections of the future, now or at any point in a yoga practice, bringing it back to focus on the breath instantly anchoring us back to the present moment, sensation in the body, breath awareness. <clears throat> so lifting out of here, we're going to come into hero's pose, so sinking the buttocks back onto the heels. Uh, most people might be able to sit this way. If, if it's too uncomfortable, you can just take the legs out in front of you, but if you're able to come to heroes, or thunderbolts, some call it, just sitting with the buttocks on the heels. We're gonna bring the hands overlapping onto the heart. A little bit of pranayama work here, but also working the shoulder joint here. So heart, third eye opener. So with the palms on the heart, we'll flip the hands, so the fingertips are touching as you bring them to the third eye. Extend the arms upward, and then out to the side, really reaching and extending here and bringing the hands back to heart center here. So again, flip the hands to the third eye, the back of the hands, extend the arms up. So you're really feeling this beautiful movement in the ball and socket joint, extending the arms, 
connecting with the breath. We'll do this a few times now. Pranayama. The <clears throat> third of the eight limbs of classical yoga. A little bit of breath work here. Vital life force energy. Maybe three more times. And allow the gaze to look up to the ceiling as the arms come overhead, if that's okay for the neck. And last time. Oh, beautiful. Excellent. Let's go ahead and transition towards standing. We're going to come back through downward dog just to come up toward a standing pose here. So tuck the toes, lift the hips up, and walking the feet toward the front of the mat, coming into a hanging forward fold. So with the weight on the feet, the torso spilling forward, and we'll ragdoll upwards here. So keep the chin tucked to the chest, keep the knees bent to begin with, and let the arms hang heavy. They're really loose and floppy. As you begin to rise upward, unfurling one vertebra at a time. The chin remains tucked to the chest until you come fully upright. So one of my teachers uses a phrase that says half that speed, which can be a good reminder when we're practicing that it's not a race. There's certain activities we do where we want to go really fast and other times in yoga, depending on the class, I mean certainly vinyasa power class, maybe we're really going vigorously, but a lot of times in yoga, we're wanting to go a really nice slow pace and connect with sensation, connect with the breath, feel in the body. And if we're standing in mountain pose here, we'll come toward a little bit of our standing weight bearing poses. Let's come toward a warrior sequence here, standing at the front of the mat, preparing to come to <clears throat> warrior uh, two. Actually, today what we're gonna do we're going to come to a wide-legged stance. We'll take face the long edge of the mat, face both feet toward the long edge of the mat. <clears throat> the feet slightly turned inward here. Now let's go ahead and turn the left foot toward the short front edge of the mat, and then bending that knee, sink down, ensuring the knee doesn't come ahead of the ankle. Keep the center of gravity and the torso back. Inhale the arms out to shoulder height. We'll come to warrior two. Turn the gaze over the forward outstretched hand. Chin parallel to the floor, torso upward and erect. There's more weight on the back foot than the front foot, interestingly. And you want to make sure you're on the four edges of, of the front foot so that you're not bearing weight into the toes. Take one straight-legged exalted warrior, straighten the leg, bring the arms overhead, and then sinking back down again to warrior two, arms at shoulder height. <clears throat> and we'll prepare for triangle pose now as we straighten that forward leg. You want to send this back hip toward the wall behind you. So reach forward with the forward fingertip, rotate the hand, lower the back of the forward hand to the inside of the forward leg and raise the back hand up overhead. Feel a broad expansion through the upper chest, clavicle separating here. Make sure that the right side of the rib cage is knitted together here. We're not just trying to get down to the floor here. We don't want this expansion in the rib cage here. We want to knit them together. Lift from the upper fingertips to come back out with arms at shoulder height and sink back down to warrior two. Straighten that forward leg, let the arms relax to the side and pivot that forward fit, foot to face the long edge of the mat again. So where we started here, wide legged stance. So we're gonna move the right foot, turn it out to face the short edge of the mat. You might be turned backwards away from the camera here. We're just going to repeat that sequence on the opposite side here. So we'll want to bend that right knee to come to a 
sort of a nine, toward a 90 degree angle. Just make sure the knee doesn't come ahead of the ankle. Keep the center of gravity back in the torso, arms out to the shoulder height, to the sides, turning the gaze over the outstretched forward hand. Keep, remember to keep more weight in the back foot than the front foot. Holding here for a few moments, the activation through the muscles here, hug the muscles to the bone. One straight leg exalted warrior, but with both arms overhead as you straighten the forward leg, raise the arms overhead. And turn the gaze to the raised hand, but just keep the head net neutral. And coming back to warrior two, bend that forward leg, arms out at shoulder height. And we'll prepare for triangle. So straighten that forward leg, reach forward with the forward fingertips, rotating the hand. So the back of the right hand comes to the inside of the right thigh, left arm raising up overhead. Now remember again with any injuries, always modify a pose to suit your knees. So for some of you, have an injury in the shoulder, you can always bend the raised arm at the elbow and just let the hand come to the small of the back. We also want to make sure that our torso remains revolved toward the long edge of the mat and we aren't starting to have the torso turned down toward the mat. Sometimes bringing the hand to the small of the back helps to ensure that we're getting the position, that optimal position. Okay, if your hands on the small of back, temporarily raising it overhead to lift yourself back up, arms at shoulder height, sink back down to warrior two. And lift, straighten that leg, let the hands come down to the side and turn that right foot to the long edge of the mat. Wide-legged stance here. I'm gonna bring the hands to the hips here and allowing the, as we prepare to come to a, a, a forward fold, we're gonna allow the hips to roll over the hands. So you're rolling the tailbone back as you come toward a forward fold. Pause at middle height, so the torso perpendicular to the floor. Now let the hands slide down the legs as you continue in a forward fold, bringing the crown of the head in the direction of the mat. Now, for some, your head might reach the mat, but if not, if you have propped hand here, remember you can always bring uh, the head, the stacked head, pardon me, <laughs> the head onto stacked blocks. Try not to stack the head. <laughs> and <clears throat> otherwise, just letting the neck relax here. You can either bend the knees to come up or sliding the hands back up to the hips, slowly lowering, half that speed, <laughs> and uh, lifting, I should say, <laughs> slowly lifting back upright. Letting the hands relax, we're gonna heel toe the feet inwards and so bring the heels together, the toes together, heels, toes, heels, toes, heels, toes. Excellent way to get back to our central position here. So coming to a standing balance pose, so again, feel free to incorporate any standing pose that, uh, of your choice that uh, you feel like doing. Otherwise, I'm going to walk us through Vrikshasana, tree pose again here. So rooting down through the four corners of the right foot. So you lift onto the tiptoes of the left foot. Keep the right hip gathered in here. Now open the left hip out to the side as you rest the left ankle, uh, left heel above the inner side of the right ankle. <clears throat> if you want to take a modification, you can raise the foot off the ground and just bring the sole of the left foot onto the right inner calf. Remember, and always keeping the right leg gathered in, hugging the muscles to the bone and the hip, don't let it fall out to the side. You can bring the hands to Anjali Mudra at heart center here. And then if possible, begin to raise the arms up overhead, taking the arms up toward either temple, so if the fingers interlaced, or separating the arms slightly wider than shoulder width here. 
So we're focusing, remember, on keeping that left hip open toward 90 degrees, on keeping the standing leg active and engaged. Now focusing on adduction here as you press the foot into the leg and press the leg back into the foot. Notice what happens to the hip flexors when you do that, when there's more of that adduction, there's more engagement here. Utilizing a soft, gentle drishti. And relaxing the hands down through center. And releasing the leg and moving in any complementary way that brings a sense of ease and balance here. Now the interesting thing with Vrikshasana and tree pose is uh, sometimes, it might be true of others as well, in many poses really, but sometimes we can get to a point where uh, it's too easy. Uh, and in that case, you want to find a way to, well, particularly if the mind starts to wander, find a way to challenge ourselves so that we're more focused in the present moment. We're more focused on the pose. So if you ever find yourself in a pose where your mind's starting to race and you're thinking about other things, see if you can challenge yourself. So one option might be to try closing the eyes. I will recommend if you're going to try that option, keep one hand just resting near the wall, just for uh, security of balance and that sort of thing. But just keeping in mind, uh, or coming to a different variation, experimenting and seeing if you can bring the leg higher up. So let's move to the opposite side here as we root through the four corners of the left foot, keep the leg active and engaged, hip hugged in, tiptoes of the right foot, open it out to the side, 90 degree angle, pressing the heel just above the ankle to begin with, keeping that inward and upward lift here. Now taking the foot off the mat, placing it where it's appropriate for you, maybe it's on the calf, maybe it's above the knee on the inner thigh, keeping the hips open. Hands can come down, jelly mudra here. And perhaps begin to straighten the arms up overhead. Maybe you want to come to interlace with temple pose in the arms or taking them more than shoulder width apart. The branches of a tree. Staying focused on the breath being aware of all the little nuances of the pose, of the adduction, the openness in the hips, the activation of the standing leg, the upward lift through the spinal column, the soft, gentle drishti. Beautiful, releasing the hands, releasing the leg, and any gentle movement that brings a sense of equilibrium. Great. All right, standing uh, solidly on the feet here. We're gonna take a little bit of twisting with the torso here. So just twisting slowly side to side here. You can let the hands swing and hang loosely, the arms hanging loosely. Now this is a gentle, slow uh, range of motion. You want to start increasing this. What I would recommend is as you come to one side, you lift the opposite heel off the mat. Doing this really allows greater sense of spaciousness. And the arms might come into more, uh, they're still hanging very relaxed and loose, but more rapid motion here. So you can do this at a really slow, gentle pace. Almost like uh, if you've done Tai Chi, this is very reminiscent to me of, I haven't done a lot, but a little bit of Tai Chi and this sort of slow movement. And you also can take it really nice and fast. The arms are so loose, they almost sort of swack, <laughs> swack you on the flank and buttocks as you come behind you. Now, as you slowly come out of this pose, you don't want to just stop suddenly. That could lead to a feeling of a little bit of lightheadedness. So slowly bringing the motion back towards center. Good work. So one more elongation of the spinal column. We're going to come to needle pose. So we want to inhale the arms out to the side and up overhead, interlacing the fingers into temple. So you want to interlace the fingers, point your finger going straight up to the ceiling. Now lift, use the lift through the arms to bring the entire torso lifting upward here. Feel the spinal column lifting up out of the pelvis. Come to a little bit of a back bend here. Lift higher and then let the 
head slightly go backward and think more about lifting the sternum up to the ceiling than about coming back. And lifting back through center. And we'll come to a little bit of a crescent moon here. And I'm rooting through the right foot, lift the torso up and arch over, imaginary barrel that you're lifting up and over. <clears throat> Inhale back to center. We'll come to the opposite side here, up and over. Lift upward before you come to the side. And back to center. We'll come to the first side a second time, right hand side. Now option just to stay here, but if you want to feel a little more a sensation of the left side of the body, you can bring the right hand down to the thigh and reach and extend those fingertips. Much like in our C curve, we reach those left fingertips toward the wall on the right hand side. That's where you feel that broadness through the left chest wall. If you've lowered the palm to the thigh, raise it back up, inhale back to center, come to the opposite side. So coming first to crescent moon, then lowering the thigh, perhaps a hand to the thigh, perhaps, and again, reaching those fingertips. So really feeling like in our crescent moon here, that lateral stretch in the side of the chest wall. Inhale the arm back up to center, coming, lifting back up right and letting the hands relax. Beautiful. We're going to do a reverse uh, rag doll to come down into a hanging forward fold here. So letting the arms hang heavy, we'll tuck the chin to the chest to begin with and let the chin, the weight of the head lead the way as it starts to pull you slightly forward. Now you can bend the knees here, that's going to help with the low back and hamstring. And let the arms hang very heavy and let the weight of the head bring you into a hanging forward fold. And then bending the knees deeply, coming down into a little squat here with the, a little bit of work for the toes here. There's some, uh, uh, not a lot of yoga classes where you work with these sorts of uh, small micro muscles of our toes. So you can um, take some time, maybe when you're watching TV or something, could just sit in front of the TV like this, or even raising the hands out in front of you. It really gives a little bit of work for the toes that can sometimes be neglected yeah, when we're focusing on a larger muscle group. Let's go ahead and come down onto our back now as we lower down into the buttocks, scooch forward, lower down onto the back. The knees will be bent, soles of the feet flat on the floor. Now keep your knees and feet on uh, at perpendicular. So running the same direction along the long edge of the mat, like two tracks of a train here. You want to prevent the knees splaying out or inward here. We'll come toward a bridge pose here. So we're going to keep the arms alongside the body, palms are facing down. The fingertips are going in the direction of the heels, whether they graze or not. <clears throat> now rock the pelvis back so the fully, uh, par full part of the spine, the low back is flush with the mat. And from here begin to lift the hips up toward the ceiling as you press through the upper back, pressing through the feet. Take the torso slightly forward toward the wall in front of the thighs so that you elongate the front line of the body. If you're accustomed to coming to yoga mudra here, you can roll onto the shoulder heads. Remember, never turn your head to the side in a pose where there's even an ounce of weight on the skull can uh, risk injury to the neck. So don't turn the head to the side. Remember your adduction here. Imagine you had a block between your thighs. You were gently squeezing and notice how that activates the hip flexor. And as you slowly lower the buttocks back down to the mat, Now, feet off the floor and hug the knees into the chest. Maybe you stay stationary here or rocking gently side to side. Now, for some, you like to keep the knees closer together, and for many of us, you can take the knees really wide apart. The toe, big toes might be touching or nearly touching. <clears throat> Spreading the low back wide, whether you stay in a stationary position or gentle rock. And we'll do a lateral knee down twist. So straighten the left leg out in front of you. Hug the right knee into the chest wall. 
Take the left hand to the outside of the right bent leg and take the right hand away from you in a T formation. Now with the left hand, draw the right leg across the center of your body toward the left hand side of the mat. Keep the right shoulder on the back of the right shoulder on the mat. Beautiful knee down lateral twist here. You can turn the gaze over the outstretched hand. If you are looking over that outstretched hand, bring the head back to center first. And then roll it onto the back, stretching that right leg out. And we'll repeat on the opposite side as you begin by hugging the left knee into the chest. Right hand to the outside of the left leg, left arm away from you in a T formation. With this right hand, draw the left knee, bent knee, bent leg over toward the right hand side of the mat and keeping this left shoulder on the mat. Maybe turn the gaze over the outstretched hand. You might really feel it here in the back of the, <clears throat> the teal muscles, the buttocks, the, the flexor perhaps. Breathing deeply. Again, if you're looking to the left shoulder, bring the head back to center first. And roll onto the back. <clears throat> and taking the left leg out in front of you, come to a cobbler or flying cobbler or goddess pose of bending the knees, bring the soles of the feet together, and let the knees splay outward here. And I'm going to invite you to bend the arms of the elbow and bring the palms onto the belly. They might just be touching fingertip to fingertip with the fingers on the belly. Another nice option, bringing the hand to this diamond pattern of thumbs and forefingers touching and resting that diamond pattern just around the navel. In any event, as you breathe, feel the expansion of the the balloon of the belly lifting into the be uh, palms. As you exhale, the deflation of the balloon as the hands rest on the belly. Bring the knees up together and you can prepare for Shavasana. So either taking the legs out in front of you, letting the feet splay upward, or perhaps you're being called in this moment to just take any last movement or position that your body might need to finish up before we come to our final resting pose. So in the traditional Shavasana, taking the legs out in front of you, letting the feet splay outward, arms a little bit away from the body. See if you can rest the back of the hand on the mat so the palms are facing up and the fingertips are uh, not overly stimulated, uh, which they might be if your hands were turned down. See if you can rest more on the occipital bridge of the skull so that there's not a contraction in the back of the neck. Scan the awareness through the body now and just observe if there's any area where you're holding or clenching in, in any manner, if there's any degree of tightness or tension. You really want to invite relaxation and spaciousness. Really shifting to a sense of letting go. Shavasana is the Sanskrit word for corpse pose, and in a sense we're uh, dying to the past, dying to the future, so that we can be fully present in the moment. <clears throat> fully alive in the present moment.
bring the awareness to a single focal point, whether you want to bring it to the third eye, between the eyebrows, or even, again, to the edge of the nostrils as you just observe the breath coming and going. There's really nothing to do. There's just a sense of awareness of If you have the luxury of time, I would recommend you stay here for another 10 or 15 minutes in Shavasana. <clears throat> Otherwise, for those who need to be done in an hour, I invite you to just gently begin to make some small movements. Just wiggling the fingers and toes and gradually increasing the range of motion by maybe rotating the wrists and ankles. <clears throat> and then hugging the knees in toward the chest. <clears throat> Come into a little compact ball, gently we're rocking side to side, and finally rolling to the right hand side. And now transitioning up to a seat to close the practice. So I invite you again to bring the palms to Anjali Mudra. even observe how the inhale lifts the sternum gently pressing into the thumbs, the exhale the opposite of this. And take a moment to call to mind again what you did at the beginning of the class, something you feel grateful for, whether it was another person, whether you're walking with us still or departed. Maybe it was a pet or some other thing that fills your heart. And also now take a moment to acknowledge yourself for making time for your yoga practice, for your self-care, for 
you're not only tending to this physical form, but to all aspects of our whole self. The light in me acknowledges and bows to the light in you. Jai and Namaste. Okay, uh, just be with the Zoom people in a quick moment.